So let's say we are studying a particular test. The test comes back with, well, let me see if I can get my font to show up, 20 true positives, which isn't that many, 10 uh, false negatives, so those are people that actually have the disorder, but uh, the test says they do not. It has a high occurrence of uh, false positives, 180. And then most people test a true negative. So uh, the test says they do not have the disease, and they in actuality do not have the disease. So this is a case of a disease that is not very prevalent, very rare. All right. So uh, to discuss whether this test is a good test or a bad test, we're going to introduce two new terms. The first one is sensitivity. Sensitivity is uh, the likelihood that uh, the test says you're sick, given that you're sick. The test says you're sick, given that you're sick. So, uh, if the test says that you're sick, and you are, that would be a true positive. that is going to be over all positives. Excuse me, everyone that's sick, excuse me. So that is both true positives and false negatives. True positives and false negatives. So you can think of it here as, oh, let's see if I can make that look a little different. And I think I can. So but maybe I can't. Let's see. Let's try. There we go. Here you're looking at this column. True positives over everyone that has the condition, true positives and false negatives. So for our situation, we are looking at the 20 true positives over the 20 plus 10 false, true positives and false negatives. And we are dividing here. So that will equal um, about 67% roughly. So that would be sensitivity. Uh, so one way you can you can, re, you can think about sensitivity, uh, typically sensitive people, if you think about it in an emotional sense, sensitive people um, are good at picking up on uh, feelings. Uh, so here you're looking at, or maybe sensitive people are, are good at picking up when someone is sad or depressed or down when someone's got something going on. So here the sensitivity looks at when you got something going on, when you got a disorder, the, does the test tell you you have that disorder? So we're going to compare sensitivity with specificity. And the specificity is your true negatives
over true negatives and false positives. And let's back this up. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so it does. It it looks at what is the likelihood of you testing negative given you do not have the disease. How do, how good of a job does the test do at telling healthy people that they are healthy? So here we're going to look at. Uh, all of our true negatives, which is a lot. We're going to look at the 1, 8, 2, 0. And I think I'm going to put that over here. Over the 1, 8, 2, 0 plus the 180. And that equals um, about 91%. So here, our specificity is higher than our sensitivity. And this is the last big takeaway I want to talk about in this video. Also, uh, just for consistency, once again, we looked at this row here for specificity. So we ended up looking at the first column for sensitivity. We looked at the second column for specificity. Uh, so the one last takeaway here. Sensitivity, how good of a job does the test do at telling sick people that they're sick? Sensitivity is how good of a job it does telling sick people that they're sick. Specificity, how good of a job does it do telling healthy people that they're healthy? Uh, your specificity is considerably higher than your sensitivity. Uh, so the test does a better job telling uh, healthy people, excuse me, does a better job telling healthy people that they're healthy than it does telling sick people that they're sick. Um, so a question that you want to reflect on, is it better to have a good sensitivity or a good specificity? Is it better to tell sick people that they're sick or healthy people that they're healthy. Um, and I like to frame this with, uh, if you think about um, a big disease breakout like Ebola. With Ebola, uh, the disease uh, could spread, uh, the infection rate was very high. Um, so if you had Ebola, you needed to be quarantined. So the question is, is it better to quarantine people that uh, might not be sick? Is it better to have a lot of false positives, quarantine people that do not, that aren't necessarily sick? Or is it better to have people that are sick be out in the general population, infecting other people? Now, no one likes to be quarantined. Uh, it, it's really expensive to quarantine someone, um, but I think most would agree that it's better to quarantine someone that doesn't need to be quarantined than have people out in the general population infecting others. So it's better if you can choose to have false positives than it is to have false negatives. So it's really, if you can pick you would rather see a really good sensitivity rate than you would a good specificity rate. And a lot of our tests, like our um, TB tests, you know, my friend who always tests positive for TB, it's better to tell people, well, you're testing positive for this condition. We're going to need to run more tests than it is to tell someone they don't have TB and send them out into the world um, and not get the treatment that they need. So 
we would prefer a good sensitivity to a good specificity. So uh, for this test here, um, probably whoever designed it would want to go back to the drawing board and see if there's ways to make it more accurate. Uh, so we would pick false negatives over false positives. It's good to have a strong sensitivity than a strong specificity because it's more important to tell sick people that they're sick than it is to tell healthy people that they're healthy. All right.